Let me, let me paint a picture for you. you. You've loaded your film. Pause, I am doing you a huge favor. I'm saving you right now from watching probably one of the most boring videos I've ever made on this channel. I'm annoyed that it's come to this because I've already filmed the whole thing and gone through the whole process, but I watched it and I was bored. And if I was bored, you're definitely gonna be bored. So today, let me give you a simple approach to getting into 35 millimeter film photography. Today, we're covering finding a film lab that you like, understanding the type of scans that you need, and then ultimately what to do with your photos after you get them. I'm keeping it simple, I'm keeping it short, we're starting right now. Finding a film lab for your 35 millimeter rolls is a must. Unless you're developing them yourself, you've gotta use one. And you've gotta use one that you ultimately can trust. So how do you know which lab is gonna be good for you? Well, I always say start off locally first. If there is a lab in your hometown, in your city that you trust, utilize them. If you don't have a film lab in your city, you gotta do a little bit more legwork. And the way that I recommend you do this is to look at your favorite film photographers and look at who they are utilizing for their development. I personally use Legacy Photo Lab. They've just been really good to me. I've used them for a long time. But two other photo labs that I've heard great things about are We Are Relics in California and State Film Lab. Just know that my word holds no weight in regards to whether they make money or I make money. I don't know these people. I'm, I'm a nobody. Well, I'm somebody, but you get, you get what I'm saying. I'm not benefiting financially from sharing this information. So again, when finding a film lab, look at your favorite photographers and see who they use. And if it aligns with your budget, utilize them. The second thing you're going to need to consider is figuring out exactly what type of scan you're going to want because development is only the first half of the process. When you're sending your rolls of film in, there are negatives in those canisters. They have to be put through chemicals to actually bring out the image that you made and captured. Once the film roll has been developed, then it comes time to scan. This is what you actually receive in an email. This is what you're gonna use to post to social media, print in a photo book or put it up on a wall. And so you need to understand why quality matters. For 90% of your applications, especially getting started, you're not gonna need to go crazy. I think a standard or enhanced scan is going to be just enough for you. The higher you go in quality in your scan is the more information that scan is going to retain. It's obviously gonna have a larger file size, but it's also gonna be able to do more for you and your photo. If you wanna print a ginormous photo and put it up on your wall, go with an eight or 16 bit TIFF scan. If there are any film veterans out here watching this and you disagree with this philosophy, let us know because this is how I've been approaching it. I've been shooting for four years now and this is really where my mindset has been. If I'm printing a book that I want a lot of people to purchase, I'm gonna spend the extra money to give them the best scans possible. If I'm printing a book to sit on my coffee table at home or to give to a friend or a family member, I'm gonna go probably enhanced or standard. So you've chosen a film lab you figured out the quality of scans that you need, and now you're wondering what to do with those scans. Recently, I sent off five rolls of film to be developed by Legacy. And their turnaround time, first and foremost, is just, mwah, it's, it's perfect. It was a week from the time the film got to them to when I got my scans in an email. The very first thing I did was I put them into Lightroom so I could sort through which ones I wanted to keep and which ones I was going to, not destroy, but not share. <laughs> The tension with those 36 exposures, right, is that you're not gonna nail everyone, and that's just part of the process. From here, I made my selects, and on some of them, I even did a little bit of minor editing. When I first got started with 35 millimeter film, I was really nervous and anxious about editing the photos once I got. I thought it maybe was disingenuous, right? And I would see all of these other great film photographers around me and I'd be like, wow, how did they get that image straight out of camera? I don't understand how they did it. And the reality is I don't think that they always do. There's a lot of benefit to dodging and burning an image, to bringing clarity to certain areas or sharpness to others. And I just wanna put this in here because I think it's important for you to know, you're entering into a really timeless art form, something that's very beautiful, but just like any outlet for creativity and art and beauty, uh, you've gotta be comfortable doing what you want to do within it. There's purists in every hobby and every interest out there, and they're gonna fill your head with so much doubt and confusion. Don't edit, do edit, don't crop, don't do this, don't shoot this film stock. Look, you gotta just explore. You gotta be open to making mistakes and learning what works for you. 35 millimeter film photography is so exciting and so fun and so stressful and scary. And I just gotta tell you, go for it. Just make the photo.
So there you have it. I saved you from the world's most boring 35 millimeter film photography video in existence. And I hopefully gave you a very simple approach to getting into 35 millimeter film photography. Thank you so much for being with me on this one. I'm excited because I've spent the time learning what works for me and what does not work for me. And I hope that this video was a good bouncing off point for you. As you get into and take the risk of film photography, please use this video as a jumping off point and know that you're gonna iterate off of this and you're gonna have your own systems and your own processes and your own preferences to making amazing 35 millimeter photos. For those of you who've been here for a minute, I just wanna say thank you again for coming back and watching another video. And for those of you who are new, I just wanna let you know, my name is Andrew, you can call me Pooch, and I wanna be your creative bestie, I wanna be your support system, and I wanna help you feel less lonely as a photographer today, like right now. And all you gotta do is subscribe, like, comment, slap the bell, uh, if we still say slap the bell, I don't think we do. And also, how many times are people making a joke about smacking the bell? That's like, it's like 10 years too late of a joke, so I'm sorry for that one. Either way, I'm here for you, to support you, to inspire you, to challenge you, to excite you, uh, to entertain you. <laughs> you know what, I, I don't know what I'm saying, but I will see you in the next one. All right, peace.